Traumatic brain injury is one of the leading causes of death. And just come out of nowhere, no one expects it. Not only in the United States, but worldwide. 1.7 million Americans suffer TBI a year. More young Americans die of injuries than all of the diseases combined. As a clinician who treats TBI patients, uh, and also as a husband and father, this is the injury that I most dread. But for traumatic brain injury, there's really been no change in treatment for, for generations. I've been practicing for about 25 years, and I've got no newer technologies now. I have yet to meet any of the doctors that don't have quite an extensive wish list. It's a huge problem. I, I wish that I had a really wish that I had. We needed to design new tools. We needed to develop new drugs. We needed to generate new thinking. We needed a new approach, one that creates teams made up of more than just doctors. Teams of researchers, mathematicians, computer scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, and donors. Taken together, this is called MSERC. Our goal is to bring together the brightest minds in the field of science, whether they be from engineering, bioengineering, chemists, computer scientists, physicians. High caliber science is a team sport. MSERC's model of transforming critical illness and injury through innovation, integration, entrepreneurship is unique within academic medicine. I am absolutely a fan of MSERC. <laughs> traumatic brain injury is a field that's ripe for development. Within MSERC, the to-do list becomes the target of multiple teams. Teams assemble to hone and develop ideas until they're ready for the grand challenge. The grand challenge is a pitch day that puts multidisciplinary teams in front of donors, entrepreneurs, and businesses. The result? Well-vetted ideas on a fast track in the most streamlined development process anywhere in academic medicine. It's very refreshing and rewarding to see these massive PBI Challenge teams from all walks of academic life come together and work together towards a focus. And that focus is actually competing against other teams throughout the university. To go through the, the grand challenge all the way to the end where uh, we, we uh, present this in a Shark Tank type environment and uh, have experts from around the world. We'll just advance our practice by so many years ahead because we see this such novel developments in both technologies, tools, research, drugs. It's really like nothing you've ever seen. It is uh, something I've never seen before. The Massey gift has allowed MSERC to actually create uh, sort of a growing number or a critical mass of products in each of those categories. And these are categorically critical tools. They include new devices, groundbreaking analytical tools, therapeutics, and more. By the time vital signs actually show that you have a problem, um, it's a really late indicator. Really late indicators do show it, but they show it with minutes to spare. And what we're trying to translate that is into hours to spare. You know, whenever you watch TV or one of the ER shows, you see the EKG in the background. Well, there is tons of information in every single waveform of that EKG. Superpowered analytics turn that very complicated waveform into meaningful information. And when you assign machine learning to that, uh, what we've discovered is that you can actually predict hours ahead of time sometimes when somebody is going to deteriorate later. So that we can actually give the kind of support to those patients and actually reduce cost and mortality dramatically. Some of this is just yeah, it's really fascinating. As doctors hear about it, they talk about this is transformational, this is holy grail types of information that we do not have today. How can we get this to the market? So the brain can be a sort of a black box. Part of our challenge is getting a view uh, inside the brain, especially at early points of care. And so we've developed a special technology, uh, a pair of glasses that just sit on your eye and they make contact with your eyelid. And they send electrical signals into your brain and by looking at these electrical signals, we can tell how much blood flow is going to your brain. So this could be a potential game changer. Well, science uh, has its limitations, it has always had its limitations, and the only way we can advance care 
and improve outcomes is to create new knowledge. Now, if you're in a battlefield, um, it is the signature injury of the current conflict because of the uh, IEDs, the improvised explosive devices. Um, and often you are under fire, you have a small team, you're far away from a field hospital. Um, you may be trapped um, uh, under fire for a long period of time. And time matters, minutes matter, hours is, is, is an eternity, but minutes matter. So if you can't be transported to higher level of care, you have to deliver care in the battlefield at the site of the injury by somebody who's not a neurosurgeon, somebody who might be a medic or your buddies. The basic thing about shock is that the tissues and the cells that are deprived of oxygen and nutrition. Uh, and there are different tissues in the body that have different uh, sensitivity or different tolerance for oxygen deprivation. One of the most sensitive tissues is brain tissue. So an injured uh, brain cell uh, can either die immediately or it can die over minutes to hours. And what valproic acid uh, does is activates the genes of those cells. Interestingly, we can change how the genes trans are transcribed into proteins and how the proteins work, which essentially means we can change the function of the cell and we can make survivors out of non-survivors using drugs that can activate these innate survival pathways. We started with only a couple of teams at the University of Michigan engaged in this intractable problem we call TBI. We now have over 10. People want to replicate this. We are lecturing around the world on this, around the country. That will grow to uh, a number between 15 uh, and 20. Our mission is to create the future of emergency care. We will be the bellwether, the benchmark. I think people will look back and say this was started at Michigan. I would have to say it's been a, a huge success.